I'm very sorry that we are late in schedule. So uh, have uh, some of us uh, have some flights to catch. So I will make uh, my presentation very short for that reason. Uh, just to introduce myself because we don't have even the chairman today. Um, just briefly about myself. I finished my middle school in 1988. This is back at Yale University. Then I completed my residency at the same university. This was in 1993. Uh, then I moved to California, Stanford University, where I did my pediatric endocrinology and diabetes there. And uh, I came back to Saudi Arabia in uh, around uh, 17 uh, years ago. And since that time, I'm doing uh, pediatrics and uh, diabetes as well. But uh, lately, I'm uh, medically directing some companies like uh, M-Health company in interested in making uh, uh, mobile health applications. Uh, as well as another uh, company, it's called Socialize. We are trying to socialize with our uh, children with diabetes. Uh, my talk is, will be about uh, uh, the use of this recent technology, which is uh, uh, the mobile phones and uh, M Health applications, and its impact on uh, children with diabetes. So it's a little bit different than the classical uh, presentation. And we are trying to uh, use another way of uh, uh, enriching children with knowledge through their mobile phones. You know that the majority of us, including ourselves, we are using mobile phones like every second, using WhatsApp and these things and uh, text messaging and these things. So we are trying to use this technology uh, to improve uh, the knowledge uh, for parents and for children and for patients in general with diabetes mellitus. Um, so this is uh, very important. Uh, I mean, it's, we know that diabetes is increasing, the prevalence of diabetes. Uh, is increasing, and uh, we have to find a, a new strategy to to uh, make things better by holding like such conferences. Uh, but uh, still, uh, I thought that uh, we'll try to invent uh, uh, a new way of improving things, like using mobile phone technology. And I'm not saying it will be a replacement for the uh, classical way of teaching, but it will be like a supplement for what we have uh, uh, right now. So how can we use uh, mobile phones to improve things? Uh, there are two ways. There's, there's the old-fashioned way by sending messages for patients to improve their uh, diabetes uh, knowledge. But uh, more recently, uh, we have what is called the uh, M-phone applications and health applications. And uh, I'm sure that every one of us uh, downloaded some, uh, some of these uh, M-health applications in his mobile phone. Uh, this piece of information is very well known that we have a good number of patients with diabetes. Things will even uh, get worse with time. We are talking about 400 million diabetics. In a uh, few years later, the number will increase to almost 600 million uh, uh, patients with diabetes. Uh, in our region here, you know that the prevalence is, uh, is already high. It's increasing. Almost uh, one quarter of our population have diabetes. So for that reason, we are trying to find something just to push this curve down. So the curve is going up, and this cannot be achieved without collaboration and partnership between physicians, technologists, IT people, and patients as well. So we developed this company like uh, eight years ago. It's called M-Health uh, uh, Company. It's, uh, it's a mobile health company. It's interested, as I told you, in uh, social media, making applications, uh, mainly for diabetes. And the good thing about our region here in Saudi Arabia, in the Gulf country, like in Emirates, for example, every one of us is not using one mobile phone. Maybe we are using two or three uh, mobile phones who are very uh, connected to this technology. And uh, as you can see here, you can read it that almost 80% of our people in Saudi Arabia at least are using mobile phones, uh, two hours or more. I'm sure that uh, among us here, people are using mobile phones as well. So we are very connected to this technology. This is not just in our region that we are connected to this technology, even internationally, as you can see here, that mobile phone became the primary way of communication between adolescents. Even if you get, if you get your children to a restaurant, for example, we are just uh, trying to communicate using mobile phones. And uh, so it says here that text messaging became the most frequent uh, form of interactions among adolescents. So we are using heavily uh, our mobile phones. Since we are using mobile phones, let's uh, get use of it. And um, 
I'm, uh, we didn't invent this technology, by the way. There are several papers talking about mobile phones and its effect and impact on uh, educating patients with diabetes and with chronic illnesses, not just only diabetes. And several studies showed that this technology might improve the knowledge and eventually the glycemic control in patients with diabetes. This is a meta-analysis. We, you know, people like uh, meta-analysis because this analysis will uh, uh, collect uh, several papers and uh, analyze these uh, several papers. So this is one of them, talking about uh, mobile phones and its impact on uh, diabetes. Uh, this uh, meta-analysis reviewed uh, a good number of articles talking about mobile phones, maybe 50 or more, but 15 of, out of these 50 uh, were selected and were analyzed, and a good number of patients were included in these studies between 20, 12 to 130. And it showed that mobile phones, applications, text messages will improve the knowledge and then improve the glycemic control in patients, children and adults with diabetes mellitus. I'm sure that you cannot read the, the this is the list of the papers were selected, but as I told you, uh, in conclusion that uh, these papers showed that this technology like M health applications, text messages, will improve the glycemic control. This is another uh, paper, it's called Systematic Review, showing the same thing. It collected a good number of papers talking about the same concept about mobile health uh, applications and uh, mobile phones and its impact on diabetes care. And here, I think the, it, it, they included the, uh, a good number, maybe uh, 21 articles, and it showed that mobile phone uh, applications uh, will improve the knowledge and the glycemic control. And we are not using the mobile phones just to send messages in our country in Saudi Arabia, but no, we are trying to use these uh, mobile phone applications to provide consultation as well. And we have several call centers. You know, people in our region, they, they are starving to uh, communication. Uh, the dentist just before me, he was saying that the importance of oral health, for example, and we should, as a diabetologist, we should refer our patients to, to a dentist. And this is fine, but it's very difficult to refer a patient to a dentist especially if we're talking about a governmental hospital. It's uh, uh, the, the waiting uh, time, maybe one, uh, one year or more. So th saying things is good, but practically you cannot refer patients to ophthalmologists, you cannot, refer, you cannot refer patients to a dentist. So the only, even the diabetologist, it's very difficult to get an appointment with a diabetologist, I mean certified diabetologist. So what patients are lacking is communication and information. So by mobile phones, by having applications, by having a call center, things will be much better. This is one of the papers we published recently last year. Uh, it was published in the Journal of Telemedicine and Telecare. And uh, the same thing, we, we try to uh, look at the effect of the mobile phone text messages on a glycemic control. This is in children and adolescents. And uh, this is the aim of the study, to test the impact of uh, mobile phones, the impact of SMS messages on uh, knowledge and then on glycemic control. We collected about 200 patients with type 1 diabetes and we were sending messages to these patients over six months. Just, just briefly, this is the parameters we looked at. We looked at the A1C, the frequency of hypo and hyper. We looked at the fasting blood glucose, the boost brain, all parameters were looked at. Not only that, we looked also at the frequency of hospital admissions, ER visits, the frequency of DKAs, the frequency of missing insulin injections, frequency of blood glucose monitoring, and, and, and lastly, the knowledge as well. So we were sending to these patients between five to seven, seven messages per day. Around 30,000 messages were sent to these patients. Also, this was supplemented by phone calls as well. This is the content of the, of the messages. Knowledge about diabetes, symptoms, signs, pathophysiology, etiology, diagnosis, anything patients, as I told you, in Saudi Arabia, in this country, is lacking and starving for information and communication. So anything you will send to them, they will benefit from it. So we sent them also video clips, how to use the insulin, how to use the glucometer, these things, anything can be sent to these patients. We were sending them infographics. The, the, the art of making infographics is very difficult to make the knowledge in one page in pictures. So we, we made a lot of, uh, a good number of infographics and we were sent by their mobile phones. Uh, so what we found, improvement in safety, 
in efficacy, in compliance, and also in knowledge. When I say safety, we are looking to the rate of hypo and hyperglycemic attacks. When I say efficacy, I'm talking about A1C and fasting and both branded glucose. Also the compliance with insulin injection, but glucose monitoring, improving this patient. Also we tested the knowledge before and after. We were sending them like a questionnaire before and after six months. And the scoring which was much better by, by the end of the study. So their rate of, of, uh, of knowledge and education improved. This is just a summary of what we found. The fasting blood glucose improved. The postprandial did improve. The simple hyperglycemic attacks, the hyperglycemic attacks, everything improved in these patients who were, which we were communicating with them. We were caring more about them. The A1C improved, frequency of missing insulin injection improved, the blood glucose monitoring improved, uh, even the ER visits, hospital admissions improved, uh, and the scoring and knowledge improved in these patients. This is the summary of everything was improved significantly in these patients. The fasting blood glucose, bosprandial, ER visits, hospital admissions, A1C, knowledge, the same thing. So this is the conclusion that uh, mobile phones, SMS messages, I'm, I'm saying clearly it's not a, a replacement of the classical uh, management, but this is a supplement of uh, the standard care we are providing to our patients. So from that study, we were thinking about exploring the, this, this uh, trial on adults with type one, with type two diabetes. And this again was published uh, last uh, in January 2015. The same concept, but this is in adults with type two diabetes. And uh, we, this time we collected uh, about 100 patients with type 2 diabetes and we were sending again SMS messages for these patients for four months. Just to make things uh, uh, very short, uh, this is what we concluded at the end, that there was some improvement in type 2 diabetes, not like in children, because we were sending the messages to parents. In children, we were sending the messages to mothers. But here we were sending the, patient, uh, the messages to patients themselves. I don't know, others maybe not interested in receiving SMS messages like children, but again, at least the knowledge, as you can see here at the bottom, improved in these patients with type 2 diabetes. The A1C improved to some extent, also significantly. The both parental blood glucose also improved in these patients. So we achieved some improvement. So now what's the next step? After we were successful to show that the SMS messages is very successful in improving the knowledge, we moved to what is called mobile phone applications. And currently, uh, there are more than 500 million smartphone user, I mean, uh, users using mHealth applications. So there's a good number of patients who are using the mobile phones, then using the, the mHealth applications to promote communications, to share information, to make decisions. Uh, so this is just uh, uh, pictures of the best uh, mHealth apps in 2013 and 2014, for example. This is, uh, uh, this is the best app, for example, if you know it, it's called the Diabetes Connect. People are sharing and downloading these applications just to share information together, like the Triple Advisor for Tourism, for example. This is the same thing. So everyone can throw his knowledge, his experience, and people can share the same information as well. Uh, this is another good uh, application, it's called Diabetes Recipe, that you can download in your, in your uh, mobile phone. If you go anywhere in a market, for example, Carrefour next door, you can scan any food item and it can tell you exactly how many grams of carbohydrates, calories and this thing. So there's a good number of apps in, uh, um, in the market here. So we decided to, our, to develop our own uh, applications, it's called Sahatak, and we were successful that 8 million Saudis downloaded this app. It is for general health, for diabetes and non-diabetes, and we are sending information in progressive free of charge to these patients. Also, we developed another application it's called Abelist. We developed another application it's called Qariboon. This is for psychiatric patients. Qariboon in Arabic means close. We are closer. And this app won the best uh, award uh, in Dubai two years ago. So this is the app specifically for diabetes for uh, uh, the Minister of Health in Saudi Arabia. And uh, through this app, we are sending information for type 1, for type 2 diabetes infographics, also like this infographics, like video clips. And also, we he, the patient who is downloading this app, he can communicate with us and send us uh, uh, consultations, and we can answer it within 24 hours. Uh, this is the, the end of my talk. If you have any questions about it, sorry for 
being late, uh, I try to move quickly because we are, as I told you, we are behind in schedule. But uh, if you want to ask me any questions, you can ask me. Thank you, Dr. Abbas. Uh, any questions? Or... I, ju I just have a comment to make. Uh, it's a, a beautiful presentation. And we are interested in uh, using this uh, smartphone-based technology much more efficiently. So we are uh, developing uh, biomarker assays on the chip, which will be on smartphone-based uh, based applications. We are also looking at uh, medical devices which will use Wi-Fi and then the smartphone uh, analytics. Like for example, we are developing a, a glucometer, non-invasive glucometer, but uh, all the data will be on the certain smartphone. But in addition to it, uh, there is a tremendous uh, interest in the healthcare industry, especially sport and uh, wellness uh, area. For example, the Apple Watch can monitor just about everything, how many steps you walked, how many hours you slept, what kind of a sleeping that you had, all of those things. And uh, Microsoft has developed a health watch, and that synchronizes with the number of our devices, like if you buy a wrist-based uh, uh, blood pressure monitor, every reading is automatically taken, it goes to the health ward and computes graphically what is happening in the 24 hour period. So a lot of the future technology will be software embedded and uh, analytics uh, programs. diabetes, uh, you're talking about health in general, about sport, which is related to diabetes as well. But uh, Dexcom, for example, we have it in Saudi Arabia. Now Dexcom, the new generation of Dexcom, the, the, glucose, the continuous glucose monitor, all information will be transferred to the mobile phone of the mother. So, and the mother can share the information with her physician. So I, I agree with you, this will be the future. It's great, thank you. Okay, I have a question. Um, for the study you did with the children and also for the adults, did you think about comparing them with a control group instead of post and yeah, This is a valid question. Actually, we don't have a control group. We use the same patients as a control before and after. Before that, they were not on this technology, but after that, they will be on this uh, way of uh, communication. So we don't have a control group. This is the, 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 the downside of our study. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Consider that uh, among the adult type 2 uh, diabetes, we have elderly uh, patients given the, the, the level of literacy. And do you face any challenges in dealing with this uh, particular group? Uh, you mean challenges? They are not compliant. Uh, Be because some of them they are not uh, using uh, or they have limited use of the, uh, of the phones yeah. or they, uh, they don't use it at all. So, Yes. Is there any plan to no. reach out to this? Uh, Based on, an, on our inclusion uh, criteria, we included people who are interested in uh, receiving the messages and they definitely they have mobile phones. Yeah. So this not, it was not an issue that they have mobile phones. We were sure before that they have mobile phones. About they are receiving the messages, we were calling them uh, now and then to make sure that they got the messages. If they are, if they are following what's, what's in the messages or not, this is based on the parameters. We look at the parameters, the end knowledge, uh, and all the diabetes parameters. Uh, things improved in some of them, not all of them. In children, the results were much better than in adults. Thank you. Yes. So I'm sorry that I have a flight to catch, so I cannot uh, continue uh, sharing the session. Actually, I'm not sharing the session, but uh, I have to leave. Sorry. get this mobile phone, especially in Nigeria where we have a lot of diabetes cases there. How to get the mobile phone? So we are talking about the mobile phone. Uh, look, we have a company, I mean the application, how to make the, the, the apps, you mean? We have a company making apps. This is not an issue. The mobile phone is the way everyone has a mobile phone. But how to develop an app? It's easy, it's not very expensive. It costs about, in Durham, to be about 60 to 100 uh, thousand dollars. 
I mean, uh, operating the whole things. I mean, we have just uh, uh, people are preparing the messages, uh, sending the messages, and these things. Uh, and we have, we have special people for a content, a health content. Yeah, we have like ten, not many. Oh, thank you. Yeah, some of them Jordanian, some of them Israeli. Yeah. 